welcome in this short video let us look at the dft that is discrete fourier transform of a real valued even n point six dft of real valued even and n point sequence that is given a sequence x of n where n is from 0 to n minus 1 that is an n point sequence and it also satisfies the definition even that is it's an even function that is x of n is equal to x of n minus n that is uh, the definition of even function for this n point sequences that is x of n is equal to x of n minus n so given so given this sequence x of n uh, which is for satisfying this definition of even function and also real valued we want to find out what is the dft of such a sequence so an even function that has real values uh, might look like this that is n this is the n axis, this is the n axis and n uh, starts from 0 and this value will be n minus 1. So the first value will be equal to n minus 1. So the, the value at n equal to 1 is equal to x of n and value x of 2 will be equal to x of n minus 2, x of n minus 2 and so on. So this is even symmetry that is this is a even valued sequence. Now we want to find out the DFT of such a sequence. Recall that the definition of the DFT is given by x of k is equal to the summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n that is the sequence itself multiplied by the Friedel factor that is e power minus j 2 pi n k divided by n multiplied by this exponential function. So therefore this is the definition of DFT. Now, we are given the information that x of n is real, it is even, then what will be the uh, influence on the x of k? That is the question. So, recall that from a previous video, we have derived the real component of the DFT as, that is xr of k as the summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x r of n that is the real component of the signal or the sequence multiplied by the cos function that is cos of 2 pi n k divided by n plus the other summation that is summation from n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x i of n multiplied by sine of 2 pi n k divided by n and since our sequence x of n is purely real, this x i of n is actually equal to 0. Now the real component x r of k is equal to the cosine transform of the data. That is n is equal to 0, n, uh, to n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n. Since x r of n is x of n or x of n is x r of n, x of n cos of 2 pi n k over capital N. So this is the definition of the real part of the DFT sequence. Now let us look at the imaginary component. Again from a previous video, again from a previous video, we have derived that xi of k that is the real, that is the imaginary component of the DFT is given by minus summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x r of n sine of 2 pi k n divided by n that is sine of 2 pi k n by n. And then minus or minus that is plus summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 xi of n cos of 2 pi nk or kn divided by n. So this is the imaginary component of the DFT. Since xi of n that is the uh, D, that is the signal or the sequence is purely real xi of n is already 0. So this part is already 0 that is this is 0. So that means xi of n are all 0. So this summation is all obviously equal to 0. So xi of k is equal to this sine transform. That is 
xi of k is equal to minus summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n since x of n is xr of n and then sin of 2 pi kn over n. Now let us look at what is the minus of first term is x of 0 sin of 0 that is sin 2 pi k 0 by n so it is eventually 0 and then the next term that is plus x of 1 sin of 2 pi k by n plus x of 2 sin 2 pi k into 2 divided by n and so on until the last term is given by x of n minus 1 and then sin of 2 pi n minus 1 into k divided by n. So that is the expansion of the summation. Now let us look at what is the value of the summation for different values of capital N. That is what is the value when n is even or what is the value when n is odd. So in the first case let us assume that n is odd that means case 1 n the value capital N is odd that is the number of the values in the n point sequence is odd then the first value is obviously equal to 0 because we have sine of 0 but the rest of the values in the summation will be the number of rest values in the summation apart from this first term is even since capital N is odd n minus 1 is even so the rest of the terms form pairs that is the rest of n minus 1 terms form pairs that is based on the definition of the even function that is even nature of the sequence even nature of x of n we have x of 1 equal to x of n minus 1 and x of 2 equal to x of n minus 2 and since n minus 1 is an even number we have perfect pairs therefore the summation therefore the summation therefore this summation can be written as x i of k is equal to the first term is already 0 the next terms the next n minus 1 terms x of 1 is common it is x of 1 is common for the first the, this term and the last term that is x of 1 and x of n minus 1 are same so we can take that as a common term so we have x of 1 multiplied by the sine of 2 pi k by n and then plus sine of 2 pi n minus 1 into k divided by n so these are the weights of the x of 1 so x of 1 multiplied by the sum of these two sine functions sine of 2 pi k by n plus sine of 2 pi n minus 1 k by n and similarly for the second term we have x of 2 multiplied by sine of 2 pi 2 k by n plus sine of 2 pi n minus 2 k divided by n similarly you can write for all the other terms now notice that this value sine of 2 pi into n minus 1 into k divided by n that is this value sine of 2 pi n minus 1 n minus 1 into k divided by n basically becomes minus of sine of 2 pi k by n because sine of 2 pi n by n into k is basically the period of the function sine. So this function becomes minus sine of 2 pi k by n. Similarly sine of 2 pi into n minus 2 into k by n also becomes minus sine of 2 pi 2 k by n. That is in general sine of 2 pi into n minus m k by n is equal to minus of sine 2 pi mk by n. So based on this result all these pairs of sine functions that is sine of 2 pi k by n with sine of 2 pi n minus 1 by n k and this pair all these things become 0 that is they cancel each other. Therefore xi of k will be equal to 0 for odd values of n. Similarly for n equal to even the first value is again x of 0 sine of again 2 pi 0 k 
divided by n which is equal to 0 but the rest of the values do not have or rest of the values do not form perfect pairs that is x of 1 will pair with x of n minus 1 x of n minus 1 and so on that is x of 2 x of 2 pairs with x of n minus 2 and so on but x of n by 2 cannot pair with x of n by 2 because there is only one value so x of n by 2 is only one value so it does not have a partner therefore x i of k therefore x therefore x i of k the imaginary component of the dft for even values of n becomes x of n by 2 multiplied by sin of 2 pi n by 2 k divided by n and of course there is a minus in the front therefore x i of k is minus of x n by 2 sin of 2 pi n by 2 k by n but fortunately fortunately this function sin of 2 pi n by 2 k by n is equal to sin of pi k that means it is a sine function of a multiple of pi which is obviously always equal to 0 therefore even for the even values of n x i of k is equal to 0 that is for even n note that for the rest of the values that is x1 and x of n minus 1 the values are same and so the corresponding sinusoids that is the corresponding sinusoids here the corresponding sinusoids here cancel each other but only one term that is n equal to n by 2 that is the central term is left and this one has a multiplier or a factor sin of 2 pi n by 2 k by n which is actually equal to 0 therefore indeed the imaginary component x i of k is equal to 0 for even values even valued n therefore the imaginary component is actually equal to 0 for all values of n hence for real valued x of n real valued x of n which satisfies the definition of even function for n point sequences that is if x of n is indeed equal to x of n minus n then then the dft of this x of n is actually equal to the summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n cos of 2 pi n k by n that is the dft is purely real and it is only a cosine transform of the data sequence thanks for watching